Hello, and thanks for joining the session. Uh, today we're going to look at adding OAuth to AstroCast. Uh, so far we have connected Twitch at the app level, Twitch at the user level, YouTube at the app level. Um, and today we're going to be looking at trying to get YouTube at the user level. Um, a couple of other things that I haven't updated uh, recently on our list here was the model. Uh, we definitely had the app level model completed, but we also have the per user model. Uh, the main differences between these two are that the user has a login, uh, has a display name, a remote ID, and a AstroCast user ID. Um, so that's the main difference between these two models. Uh, the service layer, uh, we have a bunch of stuff done at the app level. Uh, we have both Twitch and YouTube connecting. So when we look at the, um, if we look at Twitch, Live dashboard, we're going to see session 10, adding user level OAuth to YouTube. Hey Joe, it looks like Joe just joined chat. Um, and then we also have on YouTube as well. Uh, we should have the title correct there as well. So yeah, adding OAuth to AstroCast session 10. Uh, so this is all being handled by the app level part of the OAuth integration that we're doing. So we had to connect uh, OAuth at the app level um, and then we're doing it on a per user level. And if I go ahead and go to the hidden URL settings, let's see where we go there. Uh, we now have a connections um, and we can see here that I'm connected as user Bo Simonson. I can click disconnect and I can click connect again and it should actually hook me up. So um, as a user, I can actually connect my Twitch account to my AstroCast account now. Um, and for the, the things that we're going to do with that, um, if someone shows up to, uh, for example, Joe um, has just logged in, he has a user on AstroCast and he has a uh, Twitch user as well. If he associates those two, um, I want to be able to uh, give him uh, a badge or something for having watched this particular episode. Um, and I'd be able to do that by looking at um, the list of people who chatted uh, on Twitch or the people who've chatted on YouTube for this episode, and then I would be able to match that to their user account. So those are the sorts of things that I have in mind uh, for this for these sorts of integrations. So what we're going to do now is do more or less exactly this, uh, but we're going to do this for YouTube. So I'm hoping this is going to be a one session sort of deal. Um, the, the first pass at this took two sessions, but by this point I think things might be um, stable enough that we can do it a little more quickly. I just need to get something ready over here. All right, cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the code. Um, so what we have now, actually I'm gonna make sure I'm on master. I've started to use branching for this project, <laughs> which is good, but it also ends up uh, a little weird sometimes. Let's just make sure everything's up to date. There we go. I'm also did some work to add Sentry to this project so that I can be notified anytime there are JavaScript or um, PHP exceptions. I um, also want to be able to do some more things with that as well. Uh, let's see here. I installed the Yarn dependencies as well. And let's do... Uh, it might actually give me a problem because I don't have the Yarn DSN set up locally, so I might have to get that. So we'll see. Let's reload here. Oh, no, it's fine. So I, I still need to add that uh, before the Sentry connection will actually work, um, but at least it's not giving us an exception here. So if we take a quick look at uh, what we had for Twitch. Uh, we have a user directory, uh, or a user namespace rather, with a Twitch API, a Twitch API factory, and a Twitch config. Um, we're going to want to create those same things inside uh, the YouTube directory as well. It's just a quick look at what these are. Uh, we have a client ID and a client secret on the Twitch config, and we have a API factory whose job is to return a um, sort of a, a raw Twitch API class. So we have the Twitch API OAuth credentials, which extends Twitch API, Twitch API. So this factory's job 
more or less is to use our Twitch config and the URL generator interface to be able to create a new client uh, that's configured correctly with all of the correct information here. Um, ooh, it looks like possibly somebody, <laughs> uh, it looks like possibly somebody tried to insert user OAuth credentials. I'm guessing that's probably Joe, and I'm thinking he probably had an error. Uh, so just so people have an idea here, uh, what Sentry does, which is pretty nice, uh, since this is relevant to what we talked about earlier, um, is I hooked up the, slash, uh, the Slack integration and it actually gave me uh, this warning. So I knew kind of generally what was going on. I could tell um, just from this little bit of information, uh, sort of what I needed to do. So uh, yeah, yeah. So Joe's reporting you got a 500 internal server error. Um, let me see here. I'm going to try two things. Actually, you know what? I'm going to fix this while we're here because this is this is all uh, relative. The only thing is, I might. Hmm. Let's see. So it's complaining about a uh, unique constraint. I don't remember which things possibly could have had a unique constraint there. So I'm going to look at user OAuth credentials, uh, remote ID. Hmm. Ah, <laughs> I bet I know what it is. Let's fix this real quick. So um, I think that since I did some copy and paste magic here, uh, between app OAuth credentials and user OAuth credentials. I'm betting there is a unique constraint on type. Let's see here. Yes, well, user ID and type. Oh, that's interesting. Um, is this unique though? Yes, unique, true. <laughs> uh, so the, the this is a, one of those cases where I should probably be doing a lot more testing than I am, um, but since the type was unique on the um, the app level stuff, if I go back here, uh, app OAuth credentials, <laughs> um, I only needed one of any type here. So Twitch or YouTube. Um, now, uh, since Joe is trying to get his connection set up here, he's trying to create a new Twitch um, type. So I'm gonna just see if I can do this quickly. And because Quicks worked for me so far, right? All right, let's do bin console doctrine migration diff. And then let's go take a look at this diff. All right, let's see here. Looks like I, it is just gonna let me drop that index. Cool. <laughs> this is the weirdest pair program programming session ever. Yes, yes it is. Um, all right, so I'm gonna get add this. I actually get uh, doctrine migration migrate. Let's make sure that the migration doesn't break. All right, cool. Uh, All right, so I'm gonna push that, and when that actually uh, becomes online, um, Joe, I might have you try that again to click the connect button and see what happens. Um, obviously, that workflow needs some work. Fortunately, my user base is small enough that they're watching when they try it. <laughs> so that uh, can be uh, quite useful. All right, so I have this uh, deployment happening in the background. So we'll, we'll go ahead and keep working on the other stuff, and then we'll see if that actually fixes it. So user OAuth credentials, let's get back to the stuff down here. So we looked at Twitch API factory and then Twitch API itself. Uh, the idea with this class is that it's sort of a wrapper around the underlying infrastructure. So I want to be able to do things like uh, get user details. And so what this does is it handles um, uh, doing the refresh token if the current access token for that user is empty. Um, I did run into this weird case where um, it turns out we do actually need to be able to get this um, 
at the first usage. Uh, it was sort of a, a weird circular dependency thing. I'm going to go back into the Twitch controller uh, to sort of show where that happened. So it was right here in redirect user. So we have the redirect app, which handles the app credentials. Uh, inside of redirect user, uh, the thing that we wanted to have, or the thing that I wanted to have for these credentials, is that I want the credentials to have the remote ID and the display name. Now that information doesn't come back with the original um, uh, information we get from the access credentials. So this access credentials value here has stuff like the exp expiry time, uh, token type, access token, refresh token, and scope. Uh, what it doesn't have is this information. So I needed to ask for that. So I needed to ask the Twitch API to get the user details. And the first implementation did this. Um, but that doesn't work because this is an authenticated request, um, but there is no access token available at this point. So what I need to do um, is pass the access token in directly just for this request. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, there, it might do some other weird things here. Uh, but that is one gotcha that we ran into yesterday. So we're going to try and do the same thing here for um, YouTube as well. So we have the same basic setup. Uh, we have YouTube OAuth app redirect, and we have OAuth user redirect. Um, let's see here. My screen did something weird. Did you get another error? Joe, is that what you're saying? Um, it just redeployed, um, but I haven't done the migration yet. <laughs> so, uh, bin console, no, Heroku, run bin console. So the, the deployment worked, um, and it still operates mostly as you'd expect, um, except it still has that unique constraint. Um, so we'll see how this works, and then you can try it again and let me know. And running. Cool. In theory, you should be able to run it now. And everything will be good. If not, then we will just, I'll have to take that offline. Um, so redirect user is empty currently. Um, and I didn't actually fill it with any information, but we're going to fill it up um, as we go. So let's start out first uh, by starting out the user. So directory, we'll do user. So this is the user namespace. And we're going to create these classes. So we're going to do class. Ooh, 400 invalid auth. Ah, bummer. Oh, um, Adam is joined. Adam, which thing are you trying to do that you got an invalid auth? Let's see here. Looks like I do have supernova. I'm going to shrink these down a bit. Uh, like Joe put above. Okay. Um, well, Adam, if if you did it any time within the last five minutes, I would say try to click the connect button again and see if it works. Um, because until I actually ran this migration, uh, you wouldn't have been able to see that. Or you, you would have continued to see the same error that Joe did. If not, um, let me know. I also didn't see an exception pop up for you. So I'm going to see how this works. It's possible uh, Slack is doing a uh, it's possible that Slack is doing some like rate limiting sort of things. So let's see this happened. I'm going to see if I have multiples here. Is there a different link I should be using? Oh, yeah, if you actually clicked on that link, that Joe had, um, that would not work. Um, what you need to do, Adam, is create an account. So you're going to want to click register um, if you haven't created one already. Um, and then once you're logged in, I'm going to add this link to chat. Uh, settings, connect. There we go. And then once you're logged in, you can click this. So I'm going to send this to chat in just a second. There you go. Oh, that's actually the wrong URL. <laughs> uh, that's my, my local test instance. I'm adding the correct one to chat now. There you go. 
Um, so, so this uh, this is a settings page that uh, only exists as of yesterday. Uh, so I haven't actually even uh, created the menu yet to connect to it uh, because I wanted to make sure and get more of this stuff up and running. So yesterday we added this little kind of shell. Um, all we had before was this profile settings page, which wasn't, it only had the time zone essentially. Um, so yeah, let's see here. It looks like I got another message. Cool. All right, so it looks like Joe, um, I'm gonna find a way to copy this. Uh, Supernova has uh, sent a screenshot of what they're seeing. So uh, once it's connected, yeah, I still have to do some styling on this before I really launch it to the public, um, but it at least gives us that idea. Uh, Joe, if you're really feeling adventurous, you can click disconnect and try to, and try to connect again and see if that workflow all works um, the way that it should. Um, so if we look at this AstroCast issues, um, so you can see I did some testing here. It looks like I do see three events. So it's doing some um, aggregation and the oldest one is uh, 11 minutes ago, it looks like. I can't, I'm not really sure how to read these just yet. Um, but these, this is a nice way for me to know when things are broken. And, um, you know, I've seen other log tools in the past. Uh, also, so Joe's reporting that disconnect connect works. Very cool. Um, but yeah, I've seen some other things working in the past where you can just like look at raw output logs and things like that. And there's definitely some stuff that I've liked with that, but tools like Sentry are pretty nice. Because it gives you, it can give you a little more context um, if you set it up correctly, and it also does some stuff uh, like you can integrate with Slack when it's actually an exception. I get a notification about it, which is pretty awesome. Um, okay, so let's get back to uh, the, pro the actual project we're working on today. And again, if you if you see some issues, Adam, if you have problems, let me know. Um, you're going to be if you're creating a brand new account, you might be going through some other crufty stuff that. Worked when Joe signed up, <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, so we'll do YouTube API. Um, and the reason that we're keeping these separate is that the sorts of things that we're doing on behalf of the user are different than the things that we would be doing on behalf of the app itself. So keeping them in their own namespace. Um, I could have created one wrapper, but then um, there might not have been enough overlap between the things uh, to actually make a lot of sense there. So. Uh, we're just going to keep it simple and keep them separate for now. And then later, if the abstractions look like they're identical, then maybe I can just make one class. I want to do YouTube API factory and YouTube config. Okay, so let's see with the old YouTube config had a lot of information in it. Um, and we're going to have to do the same sort of thing. I forgot that this is going to be a pain, um, but it is what it is. So we're not going to keep all of this information, but we're going to keep enough of it that I'm going to copy it. And there's going to be a lot of copying here, so it's going to be fun. Um, we don't need, well, no, we do need all of this. Um, redirect URI scheme, scopes, okay. Uh, the scopes that we need are going to be probably read-only. So we need YouTube and YouTube read-only, I think is what we can get away with. Um, all right, so now we need to configure this particular object. We're gonna go into services.yaml. And we are going to look at the YouTube config copy this. Cool. So Adam's reporting that he created a login, he linked Twitch, and it went smoothly. That's awesome. Thanks for the, thanks for letting me know, Adam. That's, that's super helpful. All right. So app YouTube user. Um, we're just going to change the instances of app to user. And because we're going to be doing some stuff where YouTube needs to know the exact host name, um, yeah, I can check for you later to see if there's a duplicate, Adam. Um, but it's, it's possible you hadn't before. 
I don't want to open the the users table <laughs> right now. Um, I guess I could do it off to the side here. Uh, I do see that you do have a user OAuth credentials entry. Let's see if there's multiple users. Oh, it's the wrong one. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look like I see one, Adam. So if you had tried before and there was something else that happened, that might be what happened, but cool. All right, so let's get back here. So we need to set these things up. So let's go find out that at the top. I think it might have been YouTube API client. So we're going to create these as user. So I'm going to have to go create a new YouTube app, or at least a new client ID, I think. User, user. Disks. So we need to do the same things here. Um, actually, YouTube app client ID. There we go. Okay, cool. Um, and then we're going to need to start sharing. So I'm going to open up Strocast. We're going to do valet share. And we're going to use this URL. So now this is what we're going to have to work with all day today. ENV. Beachcasts. Oh, so Adam, your, your name is Beachcasts on Twitter? Twitch? Or... Wait, what? <laughs> I, I see Beachcast listed here. I'm not sure uh, what that's about. Uh, YouTube app client. Okay. Um, equals. Equals. All right. So we're going to have to create that. And uh, what is it? Our symphony. There we go. We need these uh, request context things updated. So that's what I was going for. So normally, for even like uh, Twitch, I can get away with using astrocast.test, but uh, YouTube is far more picky about such things. Um, OK, so we have that. What else do I need here? All right, let's go get the YouTube stuff set up. Uh, there we go. And uh, is it console? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so so we have Astrocast backend local, and I I still don't know if this is the right way to do this. Um, but what I'm going to do is create a new um, OAuth client ID for a web application, and we're going to call this Astrocast um, local. Let's see here. Okay, so we're going to copy this. So here's the client ID for the local, and this is the client secret for the local client. All right, so in here, I'm going to want to add the authorized redirect URIs. I'm not going to be able to do that until I add this ngrok. Let's see here. We need the ngrok host name. which will then allow me to add the ngrok redirect URL, which is going to be what? Uh, Astrocast.test OAuth. Uh, 
that's actually the part I needed. Uh, auth client. I need the ngrok base URL. Uh, YouTube does not, or Google does not make this easy to do local development. I'll see if that actually stuck because there have been a few times where it hasn't for some reason. Okay, it's actually there. Awesome. Okay, so let's see here. Um, the other thing that we created was the connections controller. Let's go back here. Uh, settings controller. So we have connections. So we're sending all the OAuth credentials. So we need these two. We need first this part. Um, and then let's just do a replace. The workflow is going to be almost identical. Twitch to YouTube. So this doesn't work because this doesn't actually exist yet. So we're going to create those, but at least we know uh, what we need to do here. Um, and it means that we can actually generate the name. Uh, let's connect YouTube. That was one place we didn't want the camel case. Uh, I guess we don't want it here either. I hate camel case products <laughs> because it makes me have to think harder about what I actually want to see uh, in my code, but we'll leave that for there. All right, so let's go ahead and see if we can load this page still. All right, so we can see that, which means we can go in and add a new row. So we have this list item. We're going to do another list item now to represent YouTube. So we're going to do search and replace, Twitch for YouTube. Um, all right, I think that should work. So even though we don't have anything implemented, um, I think we should still see the UI correctly. YouTube, do YouTube connection redirection. I hinted with a non existing class or interface. App controller, YouTube factory. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to the controller and bring those in. Um, so we have Twitch API factory and we need YouTube API factory. And we want the user one. Okay, cool. So we still have a connect button, which is awesome. Um, if I click it, it's going to break horribly <laughs> because um, it's not set up yet. The underlying um, classes exist enough that auto wiring works to this point. But when we actually try to call an implementation method build on our YouTube factory, it doesn't do anything. So that's the next piece that we need to start working on. So let's go ahead and pop down to YouTube. So we have YouTube config set up. So that one should be fine. Let's see the next piece. Let's probably do the YouTube factory. So this is the one that needs to do some things. Um, and the original one that we have uh, wanted a YouTube config and the URL generator. And set access token, apparently. Okay, let's do that. We'll paste these in and we're going to have to do some imports. So URL generator interface. I never want API platform core API. If anyone knows how I can get that to like customize these, like I, I thought it was supposed to be based on how many times you actually try to use something. <laughs> Um, but it never gives me the one I want, even though I manually select the correct one every single time. It's very annoying. Uh, so YouTube config, we're going to use the user one. 
Um, this is all going to be the same. This is going to be the same. Hmm. Looks like maybe I didn't actually do anything with this function. Yeah. I'll remove that then and remove this. All right, and let's take a look at build. I think build might be more or less the same as well. So it creates a new Google client. It sets the client ID, sets the client secret. It generates the OAuth app redirection. Instead, we're going to do the user redirection. Um, it parses the URL, gets the scheme and host from the YouTube config. Um, this is a way to ensure that um, uh, when the URL generator tries to create something, it uses the uh, hard-coded scheme and host. Um, just some really weird thing that we had to do. Um, and then we build the URL using the pieces, and then we set the redirect URI, set the scopes, uh, access type to offline, and prompt as consent. So I think we can copy this as is. Um, and same thing for build URL. Uh, build, build URL is just generating the URL using the parts. Apparently that's not something that you can get in raw PHP, which seems kind of ridiculous to me. Um, I think when we tried to do it, it needed uh, the Peckle HTTP extension and I couldn't get that to build. So I just had to copy and paste this from somewhere. All right, so this should generate what we need, except we want user redirection. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that should be it. So if we go back to our settings controller, um, no, it would be, yeah, this would be it. So let's do, do YouTube connection redirection. Uh, get, so that isn't, on Google service YouTube. Hmm. Do I get that error up here as well? Ah, okay, so it is true. So let's see, let's get, let's get create, no. Create auth URL, there we go. So let's see if this works. Let's try to connect to YouTube, ah. Environment variable YouTube user client ID not found. All right. Um, thought I set those. Ah. There we go. Whoa. Let's try it again. Ah. Cool, so we've got this far. So here again, it's saying that it's using this ngrok URL. If I, if I hadn't been doing that, and if I was using astrocast.test, um, YouTube would have just said, nope, don't want to do it. All right, so wants access to view your account and manage your YouTube account. I think that's the one that I don't need. View videos. Um, Well, I'm going to go through this anyway, but I might switch those scopes up. So I'm going to click allow and it's going to redirect somewhere and we're going to get a 500. Okay. So it didn't know what to do here um, because it went to YouTube OAuth user redirect. And I, I think that's an empty function right now. Yeah. So this is, this is empty. So let's go ahead and copy the original implementation. And again, we're gonna have to do something slightly different here, uh, but it's gonna be here at the base. Um, so let's see, uh, we need to ask for the, let's break these out. because we're gonna need most of this stuff. This is where things might get a little weird too, because we're using the same names for stuff. So we have YouTube API. What we really need here is user YouTube API. And we're probably gonna have to rename this one to app YouTube API, um, because we're gonna be using them in the same spot. 
So we'll do as app YouTube API and then user. Everything else should be the same, I think, um, but not that. Uh, here also, we're going to need the user OAuth credentials, not the app OAuth credentials. So bring that in. We're going to rename this to user. All right, so let's see what we get. So we have code request, access credentials, YouTube API. Ah, okay, so this now is where we need to start implementing the actual wrapper class uh, that we haven't done yet. Um, but let's assume this works for now. So get access credentials, uh, something went wrong, app OAuth credentials. So we need to do find or create for YouTube. Um, and this needs a user object. So that means we need to get a user. So we're going to go back up to Twitch just so I can make sure that I do it the same way. Um, yeah, so we need a token storage interface brought in. So we're going to go up here. And we don't want the CSRF token. Again, this is something that I wish I knew how to fix. This is the only one I ever want. <laughs> I don't want the other one, but it's always not the one that they give me. Um, and then I'm gonna get the user from the token storage and cast it to a user instance. Um, and this is where the user level stuff differs from the app level stuff. This is, I do need to pass in a user in order for this to be useful. So I'm going to go in here and see what it's doing. So it's trying to find one by um, type YouTube for the user. Um, if it doesn't exist, um, it's going to create one uh, with this user. Um, I wonder if that's still going to work. Find or create for Twitch, because I feel like I might have had to update that. No. Okay. So I think that should still be good. Okay. Um, and then we need to get the expiration time. I think this is where another place that these two differed. I think this was expires in, so I'm going to keep it like that. Token type. All those should be the same. Um, so this is setting these now to the app OAuth credentials. Uh, we're going to rename this to user OAuth credentials uh, so that it makes more sense. And then we need to set these values. Um, user OAuth credentials, set to display name. Uh, to something. This is something we need to get. Um, and then user auth credentials, set remote ID. Um, so we need to implement some way to get that information out of YouTube. Uh, if we look at this controller, we can try to do it a similar way and get it from user details. Uh, let's see, that was where? After we get the user, okay. So user details, display name, and user details, ID, I think that's what I used. No, no, remote ID. All right. Cool. All right, so this should be what we need to do uh, to get it this information. Um, so what we need to do now is go in and update our YouTube API wrapper to be able to do these things. So the two things we need, get access credentials and get user details. So we'll do get access credentials first. Um, so let's go here and let's copy 
the app implementation first. So that's going to get uh, try with refresh. Get authentication URL. Let's do this one. And double check our dependencies. So it does make sense. We're going to get a YouTube config, but we want the user one. Uh, we want YouTube API factory, and we want the user one. Uh, we want the user OAuth credentials repository. And we're going to rename this to user uh, logger interface. This is going to be the PSR, uh, PSR4, no, PSR3 logger. And object manager, because we want to be able to do stuff uh, to our objects. Um, here's, we're going to change this change the name. Okay, so all of that's going to be good. Uh, get authentication URL. Uh, this is going to be the quick way to get that URL, uh, create auth URL. Um, so this is probably something that we could do in another place, but this will be fine. Um, get access credentials. So this is the one that we needed. Um, and so what we're doing is fetch fetch access token with auth code. So we can just pass this through um, as is. The thing that we don't have, um, fine for YouTube, it's missing a user. Interesting. I need to double check how I did that with Twitch um, because this try with refresh is the thing that is supposed to be super smart. Um, so we have user YouTube API and we need user Twitch API. No, that's not. So let's see, try with refresh um, needs to take a user now because they're all going to require that. So I'm going to take a look at this implementation from time to time to see where things might have switched. Uh, so we get YouTube API. Um, so let's take a user in front of things, callable things to do. Uh, make sure we get the right thing. Um, OAuth credentials. So here we're going to get the OAuth credentials. So find for YouTube. And here's where we need to pass in user so we can satisfy that dependency. Um, First, we ask it to do the thing and pass in app OAuth credentials. Uh, so we could set the access token, but I don't, don't know about that because we might not actually have a user. Hmm. I don't know why we're not setting that on here. Oh, because we're passing. Ah, right. So we actually need to pass the um, Apple Auth credentials to the thing to do. I think that's what we did, right? Yeah, pass Apple Auth credentials. Um, and that means that this could actually be null, is the trick here. Um, this is way more complicated than I'd like for it to be. Um, access credentials, refresh token. Uh, so here was some work that we did to actually re remove the OAuth credentials um, if the refresh token failed. Um, want to go that far with this though. So a thing to do, unexpected Google service extension. Okay.
One thing I want to check before I go any further here is I want to figure out how it was getting the credentials. So if I go to get user details, um, I guess it was just being passed in an access token. I guess I'm not doing any other functions here that actually need the user. Hmm, maybe that's the difference. Get authenticated user either use the access token or get it from the user OAuth credentials. All right. If that makes sense. So let's do a similar call with the API here and get user details, user pass in the access token. Um, we're not having a Twitch API here. We're actually being passed a YouTube API. Uh, Google service YouTube, there we go. Change this to YouTube API. All right, so YouTube API, get authenticated user. So this is the f function that I need to figure out. Um, I don't even know if it needs to be the YouTube API exactly. Let's, let's look at uh, dev YouTube. So I think I, I think that I could ask for the channel ID. I don't know what happened there. Dev YouTube. Um, But I wonder if I could just use channel list content, no, snippet. Um, mine. Let's see what we get. So Okay, so that does give me that. Um, so provided I, I could get the ID, I could get the title from that. I want to see what happens if I authenticate as somebody else. Off and on, authorize. Let's see what happens if I authenticate as just a Google account because this was the problem I had before. Still gives me huh. It doesn't seem like that should work. seems to be stuck. Here we go. Why is that working? Part snippet, your API key. Hmm. Services. Uh, count. Um. Hmm. Yeah, let's try this again. I'm going to try it with a different. Like this. So we have YouTube. Let's try, say, 
that podcast. Still says Astrocast. I don't understand. <laughs> um, e tag. Wonder if it's because I granted myself access. Hmm. Info profile, get this information. Hmm. Let's try that and see. So that's what OAuth user info. User info. Okay, so that, that's me for sure. Um, what were the other these fields editor name? I don't want plus user info profile. Maybe that. Okay. Um, field picture. So I do want to get the pictures eventually. Um, I'm not going to ask for email name. Or I'm not going to ask for email, rather. Let's wonder what HD is. So this is the information that I need. Oh, I also want name, or ID rather. Let's see if I can get it without that. Okay. All right, so get authenticated user. So I'm not gonna be able to do that. So what I'm going to do instead, and this is where this is gonna fall apart a bit. Let's see what I can do. YouTube API, get client, get OAuth service, get username, ah, get, what was it? User info. might not be what I'm expecting it to be. Get um, user get need more than username but I guess if I can't get picture just yet, that's fine. Um, let's do get full name, get, 
guess let's see what it looks like. Um, get username, get ID. Hmm. ID token? I don't know what that's supposed to be. Let's see if we can dive the code. Oof. ID token. Set ID token. This might not at all be what I'm looking for, actually. Username. Uh, client secret. Yeah, that might not be right. Google data API, PHP. There we go. Ah, fields. Uh, that might be what we need. Get. So I don't think I'm going to get this done today, unfortunately. But I think we got a lot further today than we did the first time with Twitch. Um, uh, where was that? There we go. Let's see if there are examples. Simple query. Let's look at the services. Um, what? <laughs> uh, I want to see who the user is. And then I want a picture. User info. <sighs> Request is missing authentication credentials. Fix OAuth two token login cookie. Was identity. Ah, has been removed. Uh, verify identity protocols. Let's see if we can do that then. We're going to try looking at just get client get user, see what things we can get off the client. So refresh, scopes, uh, nope. Where 
does that load? Google. The YouTube one separate? I didn't think it was. No. Google API client. <sighs> yeah, that's what this is. if they're doing something weird auto load class map source google service so the class name that i'm using is google service youtube google service Ah, all right, well, that makes sense. Kind of makes sense. What is this? Google API client services. All right, so now we have all sorts of stuff. So let's look in here for picture. Page oh well, to user info plus. Services, OAuth 2. Okay. I know what I'm going to do. And we'll see if we can get it done quickly enough. All right. So, dollar OAuth service, Google service, OAuth 2. YouTube API, get client service, get. All right, so let's do to resource user info. Ah, I don't think we want the resources. We want user info plus. There we go. Get picture. Okay. So now we have the information we need. So now we want OAuth service, get ID, and display name is going to be OAuth service, get name. And then we can use what ID. So it's possible that this is still going to take another 15 minutes and I'm not going to be able to get it done. But there is a small chance that uh, we will be able to get this. <laughs> so, um, you know, OAuth service, get client. Um, So we have get user details. We don't need to do this part. Uh, we're not going to use those things. So we're just going to get this. So we're going to be passed in the YouTube API. We're going to be passed in the user OAuth credentials. Um, get picture. Let's see what we need to do here. Is there a constructor? Set access, no, okay, let's see here, set model. This is gonna be good, except that we need this part. Okay, so we need to do YouTube API, 
get client set access token. And this is where we need to use access token if it's there. Otherwise, use user OAuth credentials get access token. User OAuth credentials. Oh, um, why is that not working? Ah. There we go. So if we are being passed the access token, um, what, what's it complaining about? Method uses one parameter, but method signature uses zeros. Oh, that's, that was set, not get. There we go. Um, if we are passed an access token here, we should use that. Otherwise, it's going to use the one that it gets from the object. So let's see here now. Uh, da, 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 da. Connect. Crossing my fingers. Ah, so argument one pass to YouTube API, API get user details is an a string is given. Okay. Makes sense probably. Get access code. Um, user details. So this is a string. So that doesn't make sense. Hmm. Let me double check that's where it's being called from. So it's complaining about redirect user, get user details, and non. <laughs> okay, so it's, I'm not logged in. Um, which makes, mm, ah, okay. So I need to be, I'm not logged in to the ngrok URL. Seriously, Google makes this so difficult by requiring this to be public. Uh, so I need to go to this URL, log in as Bo. Uh, nothing found to repeat. I have no idea what this error even means. Offset thirty. Try to delimit your pattern. If there's something wrong here. out. Now it's nothing. All right, I'm going to have to call this one uh, for this session. Uh, it looks like there's going to be some additional work that needs to be done. Um, I didn't have this problem before, uh, so I'm not exactly sure what the deal is here. Um, because I've... 
I know what the problem is. Uh, I think the other stuff didn't require me to actually be logged in. So, and Twitch was more than happy to let me sort of do whatever. So, um, yeah. All right. So thanks for joining. Um, and let's see here. Let's double check the schedule to see when the next one is going to be. Uh, there might be some Astrocast after dark here soon. Um, so let's see, we have uh, December 20th, which is Thursday. So we will be here Thursday. Um, and then there won't be another official one until January 7th. So um, thanks for joining and have a great night. And if I don't see you all here on Thursday, uh, then have a happy new year and see you next year. Thanks.